Welcome to the video guys, we got an awesome one for you today. Today I am revealing the Fortnite Zero Build Secrets that is keeping you from becoming the player that you want to be. This is an extensive guide that's going to show you all the secrets that the pros and the best gamers are using when playing Fortnite Zero Builds. So if you watch this full video and apply these techniques to your gameplay, I can guarantee you are going to win more fights and ultimately you're going to win more games. So let's hop in. All right, the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is movement and positioning. Now, obviously movement and positioning, that's pretty broad terms. So we're gonna break it down quite a bit further. So one thing in Zero Build, if you, if you have to take anything from this video at all, I want you to remember this one thing. Your movement is so important in Zero Builds. You always need to be moving. Now, in builds, it's a little bit different because if you're out in the open, you know, you can build a, a castle around you if you want, and you can be safe at least momentarily. But in zero builds, unless you're in a building with four walls all around you, you have somewhere that's gonna be exposed. So while movement is very important and always staying on the move is very important, we really actually need to be focusing on where we're moving. So obviously the Fortnite map changes every season and we never really know what we're gonna get. But there's one thing that always stays the same and that is open spaces in the map. Okay, these are places that we don't want to go. We want to avoid them at all cost. Open spaces are your worst enemy in zero builds. Okay, you are just a sitting duck out there and it doesn't matter how good your aim is. If someone's behind cover shooting at you in the open, you're not going to win that fight. So what I like to do is plan out alternate routes that you can take. So if you see something, if you see somewhere you want to go, you don't have to just take a straight line there. You know, there's plenty of time in the game. You don't have to go as fast as you can through a wide open space. Try to move around, go behind trees, go behind rocks, go through buildings if you can, but you want to be avoiding those open areas. Now, obviously using a vehicle is a great way to get through those areas and a vehicle offers a lot of protection. However, I will recommend using the G-Wagon as it has a lot more off-road capabilities than the rocket racing cars and obviously Obviously, the dirt bike doesn't really give you much protection, if any. Um, so I would recommend highly using the G-Wagon. And if you're playing with more people, you can obviously carry your full squad in there. So a G-Wagon is always the best bet. But clearly, any vehicle is going to be a benefit to having for mobility other than just running. Now, when is it okay to actually go out in the open? Let's say, for instance, a scenario. I'm going to show you right here on the screen. You eliminate a player and uh, they're out in the open and you eliminate them and what are your first actions um, before i trained myself not to do this i was immediately running to go grab their loot and sometimes that didn't work out so well because because think about this so as soon as you hear gunshots in fortnite you know 200 meters away whatever whatever the range is as soon as you hear those shots you are immediately going to try to third party that person and eliminate whoever was injured in that fight so what you want to do, if you eliminate someone in the open, unless you are within like five meters away, you need to go back and find some cover. If you were already in cover, just stay there. But you need to go find some cover, get into a building, go hide in a bush, completely conceal yourself if you want, but wait about 20 or 30 seconds. And that 20 or 30 seconds is going to give enough time for people to actually come if they were trying to third party you. So you want to still be concealed and hiding, and you can actually use that loot as bait and possibly get another free easy kill. But after about 30 seconds, you should be in the clear to go ahead and grab that loot. However, you still want to be quick and not take too much time. So what I would recommend doing is try to scope out the loot and see what's there and if there's something that you actually want. And if there is, decide what you want in your inventory that you're gonna swap out. Go ahead and drop it before you run out there to get the loot. And that way there's not gonna be any mistakes made. You know, you sometimes you might accidentally swap the wrong weapon or the wrong item. So you want to make sure that nothing's going to go awry and you're just going to go get that loot and it's going to be a smooth process. So as soon as you get that loot, immediately you're going back to cover, going back somewhere safe. All right, so we've established that staying out of the open is very important in zero builds. However, we need to take extra notice when we're actually pushing a fight. So if you have someone up on a roof or a rock or anywhere that has a height advantage on you and you're pushing them out in the open, that's a terrible idea. No matter how good your aim is, you're going to lose that fight like 99% of the time because that person has so much better positioning that it's not a fair fight at all. So even if you have the best aim in the world, 
you need to understand that 50% of every fight one in zero builds is based off of your movement and positioning. So I give about 25% to your weapon of choice and about 25% to your aim. And then the other 50% is all based on what I'm telling you right now. Your positioning and movement are so vital in zero builds that it is insane that I, I took so long to realize this. I was just, you know, thinking I could run out there and use my aim to eliminate someone or, you know, use what weapon I have. I'm thinking, oh, I got this, you know, legendary weapon. It doesn't really matter if you're not taking advantage of the positioning tactics because if you're just rushing someone out in the open, ah, that's there's not really much that you can do when your enemy ducks behind a wall and then comes back out and beams you. So that actually leads me to my next point about not getting too close to an enemy. Now, obviously, if you've already cracked someone, you know they're like, literally one shot or one pump shotgun away go ahead and rush them and finish them off that's the obvious kill that's the obvious move there but what happens if you get too close and you get cracked well if you're within like five meters away from that enemy you're not going to be able to get out of there before they eliminate you so sometimes if you rush in you get cracked you try to turn around and sprint out but it's too late by that point so what I recommend doing is staying about 7 to 15 meters away and that's going to give you a lot better range and versatility of your weapon choice as well. So the damage doesn't start falling off on the pump shotgun until about 7 meters away and it's still over 70% right there. And then at 12 meters away it's still shooting 50%. So you, you can still use a pump shotgun, you can use an SMG or an AR in that scenario, and you have a lot better variety, you can switch weapons, and you can you know pop back in and out, switching your weapons and uh, throwing off your enemy. So that's a massive advantage that you can have when you're ducking and weaving in between cover, you know, swapping weapons, they don't know what you're gonna pull out next, and it's just a huge benefit to not get too close. So here's another massive benefit to not getting too close to your enemy. So let's say you're in a situation and you get cracked. You don't have anywhere to go. You're super close to your enemy. What are your what are your instincts going to tell you to do? If you have them, I would guess you're probably going to pull out a shockwave and throw it down right in front of you and just send you flying and get out of there as fast as you can. And that's probably the smart play to do. But if you're the enemy who cracks that person and they shockwave... You want to be far enough away that that shockwave doesn't hit you and blast you out. Because now, if that shockwave hits you and blasts you backwards, you're going to get thrown out into somewhere random, and there's a good chance that there might be someone just waiting out there to get you a free easy kill. So you want to avoid that situation, and then also what that does is it allows you to track your enemy when they shockwave away. If you don't get shockwaved as well, now you can track your enemy a lot easier and shoot them out of the sky. And if they're already cracked, there's a good chance you could probably get the full elim before they have a chance to shockwave again and get out of there. Obviously, you could start to, start to chase them down with your shockwaves if you want to. But that kind of gets hairy when you're just going out there in the open chasing somebody. You don't really want to go on a chase or a scavenger hunt, I like to call it. Um, you don't want to be chasing someone across a map because that's usually going to end up badly. All right, so I feel like we have a pretty good basis of our movement and positioning. Here in a little bit, we're going to cover some advanced movement. Um, that's towards the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. But right now, we're going to focus on our inventory. So obviously, every season, Fortnite brings new weapons, they recycle old weapons, and all the items and everything changes. Now, what I want you to do at every season, the beginning of every season, is find every weapon in the game and use it in at least one game, maybe two games. And I want you to understand exactly how that weapon works, understand the fire rate, understand the damage that it does, and understand the reload times. I want you to know that gun inside and out. And after you have all the guns figured out in your head, I want you to pick out your favorite and stick with those whenever you can. So if you stick with the same weapons, you are, become, you are going to become an absolute expert with those weapons, at least for that season. And this will help you have more consistency in your gameplay, and you'll, you'll start to get that rhythm down of knowing exactly when to switch weapons and how, how, you know, how long do I need to shoot for before I swap to my shotgun or, or whatever the case may be. It's going to be a lot more beneficial to have that solid, steady framework of using that same weapon over and over and over. 
However, what is important, like I said, you want to make sure that you use all the guns and all the items and understand everything. Because in most cases, you're not going to just drop and get your loadout that you like to run. You know, it might take quite a while or it might not even happen in an entire game. So whenever you don't have your loadout, you want to make sure that you're familiar with all the other weapons and that you've used them enough to be, you know, be confident in your own skill with that gun. Now, what's also super important is carrying your items and weapons in the same inventory slots. So a pretty common way that I see it done and I like to run it is I start with my longest range weapon on the left side and I move to my shortest range weapon on the right side. So in Chapter 5, Season 2, I'm usually carrying three weapons and then a shockwave and a healing item. I like to carry the Reaper sniper rifle whenever I get a chance. However, the spawn rate has been reduced a lot. So that's kind of uh, give or take. And then I like to run an SMG and a Frenzy Auto Shotgun. Now, in place of the Reaper Sniper Rifle, I will change depending on the gameplay and where we're at in the game. I will run either a DMR or a Warforged Assault Rifle, possibly sometimes a Nemesis. I do find that the Nemesis has a lot less recoil than the Warforged, so if you're really looking for that longer range weapon, the Nemesis is a little bit better for that for that scenario. Um, the Warforged, I would more swap out for the SMG because I feel like that's kind of a closer to mid-range weapon where this, the Nemesis is, is a long, longer range than, uh, than the Warforged. But let's not get too much sidetracked here. So we run in three weapons and then my Shockwaves and then a Healing Item. The Healing Item can really be whatever you want, but you do want to take into account where you're at in the game. So early game to mid game, I'm usually running shields. And that's because, you know, usually you can you can find white health in a lot of different places. It's all over the map, scattered around. And a lot of times in fights, you don't even get cracked enough all the way down to your white health. So, you know, you're just looking for shields anyways most of the time. Now, when you get to late game, you got to understand that things are going to be a lot different. So you might end up having to make a play in the storm as that sh as that circle is shrinking smaller and smaller and smaller. You're probably going to have to make a play in that storm at some point, And that storm is going to be ticking for a lot more than it was in the early game. So I would recommend carrying med kits at this point. I mean, you can carry three med kits. And if you get into storm and you're in there for a few seconds, you know, that's going to give, give you a big old chunk out of your white health. So you can get back in storm, use a med kit, you still got extras. And I think that's going to be a lot more beneficial than using shields in late game. Now, also in late game, you can swap out some items. So let's say you're in an open area and uh, the circle is small. There's a few people left and you don't really feel like you're going to be getting too close to someone you could if you want to drop your shotgun or drop an smg and only rock two weapons and you still have your sniper rifle or your longer range weapon and then you have one close range weapon and the reason i say this is because you could carry more heals or items that way so you could be carrying a heal a shockwave and then the ever vital importance of <laughs> a porta bunker the porta bunkers are a huge deal in zero builds in the late game and if you're not rocking one it's probably not very likely that you're going to win the game they are extremely valuable and you want to try to be stocking up on those throughout the game so if you can you know you might throw around some healing items here and there and just you need to judge the game on where it's at and when you need to be picking up certain items so as i said before you know early game be rocking some shields late game try to be rocking more white health like med kits or bandages and then uh, you want to try to throw in some uh, bunkers in there and some shock waves so just mess around with it play around with it as you want and feel what's comfortable for you everyone has a little bit different a gameplay and game styles but these are the basics that is going to help you win those fights that you're wanting to win help you finish out the game strong and give you that victory royale now that we've covered our inventory and our movement and positioning, we need to back up a step to the battle bus. Now, the battle bus is where most people start planning their game and start deciding where they want to drop. But you need to backtrack about a minute or 30 seconds or so. And as soon as you get into that lobby, you need to be opening up the map and investigating where you want to go. Okay, what I like to do is have about three POIs on the map that I always like to drop at. And 
when you see the battle bust, you can judge which one's the closest and you wanna be going for that POI all the time. So for me, I like Reckless Railways, Fencing Fields, and Grim Gate. They're all kind of in the middle of the map and it gives you a lot better opportunity to stay there and rotate than if you land on the edge of a map and Storm has a bad pull for you. So I like to use those three and I'll usually try to gauge which one is closest due to the battle bus. Now, what you wanna do is you want to actually plan out where you're going to be going. So from your POI of choice, you want to plan out where you're going to rotate after that. So basically you're already mapping out in your head before the before the battle bus even launches, you're mapping out where you're landing, where you're going to land at that location specifically, and then where you're going to start rotating after that. Clearly after that, it's going to depend on storm, but you still want to have your options and sort it out. As soon as the next circle is revealed, you want to start mapping out where you're going to be going and taking the best routes to get there. And as far as taking the routes to get there, you're going to be want to... You're going to want to use high ground as much as possible and a lot of cover sticking to that movement and positioning keys. Now you can actually use websites like fortnite.gg to look at the Fortnite map and see where 100% spawn rates of certain things are. Like for instance, god chests in this season or you know just chests in general, you can find where they're going to always be in each POI. So what I would recommend doing is going onto that website, pick out your favorite POI, and click on the 100% uh, spawn rate and see where they're at. And then every time you go to drop at that location, you know exactly where you're going and you know that you're gonna go to that chest and find at least a weapon. And that is a vital key. You want to be as fast as you can. You want to get on the ground ASAP and get a weapon and start looking for other people. So as fast as you can get down, that's gonna benefit you an extreme amount because you, the more time that you're on the ground, that means the better chances you have of looting up, finding more weapons, finding shields, finding med kits, whatever the case may be, before people even get to the ground. A lot of times you can be fully kitted up before people are even landing. But you also need to keep in mind that the first two minutes or so of every game is usually going to be the busiest time that you have until the end of the game. Because everyone's landing in one spot, everyone's fighting for that loot. So I just want you to be aware of that. Now, if you want to shoot for more of the outskirts, you can always try the outskirts and pushing in towards a more populated area. That's fine as well. It does give you a little bit more time to loot up. However, if you can, I would highly recommend going to one of the more populated areas at first finding the good loot and just making sure that you land first and that you are able to control that piece from there. So speaking of control, I want to talk a little bit about actually controlling the gameplay and controlling your game that you're in. Now, I say all that assuming that you are a fairly skilled player already. Now, if you aren't completely sure and confident in your skills to win a couple fights right when you land, then I would recommend doing this. Instead of landing in a pretty populated area, pick out places on the outskirts that you know you never see anybody land at. And what you can do then is go ahead and get your loot, get completely kitted out, get everything that you need, and then you can start making a push for those areas. So that way you feel completely confident, you can get every weapon that you want, and then you can go engage in enemies. Now, obviously you're not gonna be stacking up a lot of eliminations playing that way, but if you need to get a feel for it and you need to get more confident in your gameplay, that's a great way to go. Now, I will say when you're on your way to your next POI, make sure that you're maintaining high ground as often as possible and make sure that you're still using that movement and positioning tactics we talked about earlier. You are avoiding open spaces. You're trying to get behind rocks, go through buildings, whatever the case, using vehicles. You want to be up high where you can see everything in a vehicle. That would be a, the perfect scenario, really. That's a, that's a great scenario when you can see everything. So just make sure that you're using your head and you aren't just running aimlessly around trying to find a place to go. Now, I will also say we want to make sure that we're avoiding being caught by the storm. Now, a lot of people think that in early game, you know, the storm's only a one tick, so it really isn't that big of a deal. And that's true. It's not really going to hurt you that much. But here's what does hurt you. Let's say you're in a POI looting up on the edge of the map and you didn't realize that the storm is going all the way across the map of you know several hundred meters and you don't have a vehicle and you just start running because you don't want to be completely stuck in storm because you have a long way to go. Well, 
when you're just running from the storm, there's a good chance that you're going to be hitting a lot of open spaces. And that's going to open up the opportunity for people to easily eliminate you because you're focused on not losing health to the storm while they're focused on camping, waiting for you to be running from the storm and shooting you. So you want to make sure that you land. If you land, especially on those outskirts, you want to make sure you land and loot up as fast as you can so that you aren't getting stuck by that storm and the storm isn't going to make you move somewhere you don't want to go. Make Essentially, you don't want the storm to be making the decision for you. And being ahead of the storm is actually vital for not only the beginning of the game, but really for every stage of the game. If you can be ahead of the storm, it's super helpful, super important, because you can go scope out the area, find the high ground in that location where the storm's going to be, and you can set up shop there. And you can usually see most of the things that are happening, and you can control them out from that way. Which also wants me to point out, you need to be going for the island, okay? The island is one of the best things that Fortnite has offered us for game control. So as soon as you see the island spawning in, you need to be heading there as fast as you can. Hopefully you have a vehicle at that point in the game and you drive there. And as soon as it spawns, you wanna be the first one up there and start controlling the island. Now you don't necessarily have to capture the island, but if you just get up there and show your presence, especially if you have a sniper rifle, well, I'd say 90% of the people in the lobby aren't going to try to push you. Only the real sweats and tryhards will actually try to challenge the island if you're setting up there. So the island not only gives you a good piece of control in the game that way, but also you can see pretty much everything. Because at that point in the game, the circle's getting pretty small, and you can see a lot of the map. Especially if you have a sniper rifle, you can be scoping out and looking what's going on, you know, looking looking for what teams are getting a lot of eliminations. Um, you can be looking at shots and try to examine, you know, uh, what team's going to be your biggest threat. And then whenever you are ready to go from the island, because the storm's bound to come in pretty quick, um, you know, use your launch pad and go to a POI that you think is probably your safest bet. So if you see, you know, a team over here, at fencing fields, eliminating everyone that rolls up. You probably shouldn't go to fencing fields. Maybe try going somewhere else a little bit further away and then figure out what, uh, what your next move would be. And all the while, you're maintaining that positioning and movement. Now, while you don't want to go dropping on that team or that player that is eliminating everybody, you do want to make him your number one focus. So if you see someone eliminating everybody in the lobby, you know that that's probably your biggest threat. So you want to go drop somewhere that you can get a good vantage point. And if they're shooting someone or if they're in a fight, you want to try to third party that as much as you can. Because that is going to be your biggest threat in the game. And if you can eliminate that person, then there's a good chance that the rest of the people might just be bots. And honestly, you've won the game. So you want to always be aware of your biggest threats. That's just part of game awareness. So if you're up on the island and you see that team or see that player and you jump down, make sure you go for that person if you can. Now, obviously certain situations you can't do that, but that is the best bet that you have to winning the game is taking out your biggest threat and then that leaves you with people that you can feel more confident about. All right, now it's time to get into the advanced techniques. So these techniques are gonna be absolutely fun to use. You're gonna have a blast doing them, but it's going to require some practice and you're going to have to be willing to actually pay attention and see exactly what we're doing in these situations so that you can take them and apply them to your game to win those fights a lot easier than you were before. So I'm, I'm hoping that by going over these advanced movement techniques and really this entire video that it completely changes the way that you play zero build. It certainly has for me as I've been applying them to my gameplay. I've seen a massive difference in my own gameplay, my own win rate and elimination rate. Now, as we talk about movement and positioning, you know, obviously that's super important. However, we can't clearly ignore shooting. You know, that's <laughs> that's kind of the whole point of the game. Unless you're bush camp dad, then you can kind of ignore shooting. But we aren't here to just do that. We're here to become a legend in Fortnite. And you're not gonna do that by not shooting at anybody. All right, now to start with the advanced techniques, we first need to focus on what you're doing wrong. So let's focus on what you're doing wrong in shooting. So first of all, you might not even be using the right weapon in the right scenario. 
So a lot of people, when they see an enemy 250, 300 meters away, what do you probably do? You probably pull out your sniper rifle and you're like, oh, watch this, I'm going to get a headshot. And then you miss. And then they see you and they run away. Or maybe you tag them on a body shot and they see you, you know, they see where it came from. They still run away or they go hide and start healing or they might even start pushing you. You know, if, if they think, oh, this guy's going to try to snipe me, I'll get up close to him and I'll snipe him or whatever the case may be. So here's what I want you to think about. If you see someone that far away, don't necessarily just instantly go for the headshot snipe. Now, clearly, if they're in a battle fighting with someone else, you know, that's probably a pretty safe bet because they're not going to turn their attention to you 300 meters away when they're in the middle of a fight. But what I would recommend doing is if you flash that sniper glare at them and they see you, what I would do is not even take a sniper shot. Push in through like 150 meters away. That's a much more reasonable shot that you could take. And you still want to maintain the high ground, but now you can easily get a headshot snipe if you're going to still use your sniper rifle. However, you can also get into more of a range where you can use the sniper or an AR, and either one would be a reasonable choice at that point. So it gives you more options, and you're not going to just scare away the enemy by taking a shot from 300 meters away that you really probably don't have much of a chance of hitting. So it's all just part of being smart and not always going for that amazing play that you can say, oh, clip that, you know, let's, <laughs> let's put this on YouTube. Uh, sometimes it's just all about making the smart play. And sometimes the smart play isn't exciting, you know? Sometimes it's just moving up, getting closer, and not going for the headshot snipe. Now, obviously, you can still go for the headshot snipe once you get closer, but I just want you to understand that it's not always about highlights when you're trying to win. Obviously, if you're winning every game or winning every fight, highlights will naturally come, so don't try to force them. All right, so something I really enjoy doing, and it's, it's a lot of fun, actually, but it's actually super valuable and super effective. So if you see an enemy a decent amount away, what I like to do is pull out an AR or pull out my SMG, whatever I have in that case, and feather feather the bullets, you know, tag them a couple times, kind of see what they're going to do. If they start pushing me, you know, go behind some cover because you're always using that positioning and movement, right? That's always number one. You go behind the cover, pull out your sniper rifle, and then right when they're shooting at you, or running at you, now you pop out with a sniper rifle, bang, they're dead. It's a great baiting technique. You know, they probably aren't thinking, oh, they're going to pull out a sniper rifle. You know, they've been shooting me with an AR. So obviously, that's probably what they're going to have or a shotgun or whatever. So it's, it's a great way to bait somebody into pushing you. Obviously, if they do end up coming closer, well, you're probably still going to have the advantage because you're using that uh, positioning. But it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do but it's also super effective so that kind of leads me into my next one that i actually made this one up and i think that it's pretty effective it's certainly a lot of fun but it uh, it might take a little bit of practice and it also requires two sniper rifles which might be a little bit difficult right now in game so essentially what you do and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you it right here so you pull out your sniper rifle with the 4x scope so somebody sees the sniper rifle they see that you have the glare they know that you are going to you know try to snipe them so bang pull out your sniper rifle they're probably going to rush you or run away depends but if they do end up rushing you drop down to the lower level pull out your second sniper rifle that does not have the 4x scope and <laughs> essentially they don't realize you still have a sniper rifle in your hand and you can headshot them while they're running straight at you and it is a absolute amazing baiting technique. Um, those are more baiting kind of fun techniques. But uh, let's talk about some more vital things about your movements and advanced movements that you can make that will actually help you win every fight. Also, I did forget to mention that uh, a lot of people, what they're doing wrong when they're firing a weapon, especially new players, is they will empty an entire magazine into someone when they're in a fight, like either an AR or SMG. They will just completely hold down the trigger or whatever if you're on mouse and keyboard. 
Um, they will just completely empty an entire magazine into the enemy and probably missing a lot of the shots. So that's something you do not want to do. For one thing, that's going to be a massive downfall when you swap to your shotgun because they push you a little bit closer. You're trying to shoot them with their shotgun. They run away. You try to swap back to your AR or SMG. You realize you're out of ammunition and you have to reload. It's just a whole mess. So instead of doing that, you still want to be behind cover. That positioning is super important, okay? I'm telling you, you want to be behind cover and you want to pop out and tag them a few times and feather your shots, okay? Just feather your shots. It's not super important that you just instantly get the kill. It's just important that you end up getting the kill. So if you're just sitting there popping out and feathering your shots, it's going to do two things. It's going to slowly chunk away at their health and it's going to drastically diminish the chances that you have of actually getting shot because you're popping in and out behind the cover so try doing that i know it might feel a little bit weird just you know feathering somebody um especially with time to kill in fortnite you know it's it's not very fast compared to like call of duty or something like that but if you can learn to feather your shots it's going to help in accuracy and you're going to get a lot more eliminations that way than if you just empty an entire magazine um, but if you feather those shots and let it reset after every couple shots, it's going to be a lot more accurate. So you're actually going to be able to hit more shots per second than if you were just holding down the trigger. Okay, let's get into the advanced movements. And these are a blast and you're going to have a lot of fun with them. And it's going to be super helpful. And I can't wait to get into it. All right, let's go. Okay, do you ever see an enemy with like some insane movement? And you can just kind of think to yourself like, oh, crap. This guy's good. I'm probably going to die in this fight. I'm still going to push it, but I'm probably going to die. Well, I'm going to turn you into the guy that is making people afraid of them. Okay? Movement is pretty simple in Fortnite, but it can be mastered to a level that looks crazy. So I'm going to go through a few advanced movements here, and uh, hopefully it's going to help you a lot in your, in your fights and in your zero build wins, and you're going to absolutely love this. All right, so first of all, let's talk about sprinting. So sprinting wasn't even always in Fortnite, and it's not very vital when you're rotating um, or when you're going from POI to POI. Um, it's not really that beneficial. I mean, other than obviously, you know, you'll get there a little bit faster. But if you're always sprinting, it's going to give you a few issues when you actually get to a fight. So when you're actually in a fight in zero build, your sprint mechanic is super important to have that full. So what I recommend is trying to learn not to sprint everywhere that you go. Um, if you do end up sprinting a little bit, you know, if you want to slide down a hill and you sprint, just try to keep it at least above half full so that if you do run into someone, you still have some of your sprint left. Now, what sprinting does is it allows you to jump further jump higher, jump quicker, um, all kinds of scenarios that is very beneficial. But if you're in a fight and you don't have sprint, well, there's a good chance that your opponent does and that's going to give them a massive advantage. So that's why I want you to focus on not sprinting every chance you get. Matter of fact, actually, let's do this. Every time you start sprinting, I want you to empty an entire magazine into the air or wherever. And uh, I'd say by the end of the first game or two, you're probably going to break that habit of sprinting everywhere. And it's the reason I say that is because it's so important to have your sprint mechanic when you're in a zero build fight. So let's take a look at this one here. So this one is just a little juke move, but it's pretty simple to do, but it will throw your enemy off a lot of the time, probably 99% of the time. So essentially, let's say your enemy is behind a wall, behind a rock, a tree, whatever the case may be. What I would recommend doing is sprinting one direction because you have your sprint mechanic now. So you're sprinting in one direction. And in the last second, you jump and turn the other direction and you'll end up behind them most likely because their eyes are going to be focused where you were, were going to go. But now you're going the opposite direction and it's going to throw them off. You're probably going to get at least a couple easy shots off without them even getting fully turned around. And you might even get the elimination without them even realizing what happened. And as I, sh I showed you here, what, what it can happen and how you can do it, it's really not a difficult thing to do, but it's something that most of us don't really think about when we're in the middle of a fight. So you got to kind of train yourself to do that um, instead of just sliding straight 
you know, around a corner into someone. Now, if you are sliding around that corner, there is a couple of options you can do. For one thing, I would slide and learn to jump right as you're coming into view of the person because it's going to be a lot harder target to hit if you are jumping in the air. Now, they might expect that you're sliding already um, or they might expect that you're just coming in at head level. So just be aware of that if you're sliding and jumping, you're going to jump a lot higher than if you were just running, uh, not sprinting, sorry. If you were not sprinting and jumping, um, you would not go near as high. So you can do that, slide and jump into the direction that you were going, and that's going to throw them off a little bit, not as much as going behind them, but it's still going to throw them off. Now, depending on the situation, you can also slide and try to jump over them and pretty much break their camera, break their aim assist, and you're going to be completely throwing them off okay if you can learn how to do this one it's super important though that you have your sprint because if you don't sprint and jump over them then you are not going to be able to actually jump over them and you know break their camera angles so if you are just running or walking or whatever and try to jump over them um, they're going to be able to track you pretty easily but if you're sprinting and do that or if you're sliding and do that um, it's going to break their camera and then what you want to do is learn how to turn around and then that way when you land, you can already have your, your sights set and you're essentially coming down into the target. So, you know, here's the target and you come and you slide and then bang, when you get into range, when you get lined up with that target, that's when you fire your shot. Now, something else that you can also do is when you're jumping and sliding over someone, you can actually turn around. And so then you're sliding backwards away from that person and they're they're kind of lost not knowing what's going on you're sliding backwards and shooting them they probably have their shotgun out but you're gaining distance from them and that's a huge benefit because you know exactly what you were doing because you planned it out they don't know what's going on they think you have the shotgun so you're back here sliding away and they're shooting at you with the shotgun but you're getting further away so all of a sudden they switch to a different weapon and that's when you start sprinting back at them pull out your shotgun and then you probably just got a pretty good elimination. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with these movements, um, with the sliding and jumping movements. And I just, I recommend that you go play around with them. You know, even go into creative map like I was here and just mess around with what you can do with the movements and, you know, how to turn around faster. You might have to mess around with your controller settings if you're on controller a little bit because your, your movement you know, around 360 wise might not be quite as fast as it needs to be. Um, so you might mess around with with that. Um, and then also, if you are on controller, you will want to change your uh, slide time uh, as low as it can go. It's, it's like 0 0.01 seconds. So it's pretty much going to give you instant slides. Um, super helpful. And it's going to be a massive benefactor in doing these uh, doing these crazy moves with your slides and uh, jumps and everything. So Sliding and jumping, that's super fun, super great. But I also want to talk to you about mantling. So mantling is something that's kind of been forgotten about for quite some time. I mean, I say forgotten about. It's just I don't feel like it's uh, used in combat very often. Um, mantling isn't like a combat mechanic. Most people don't think. It's usually just used for getting somewhere or, you know, mobility in a certain situation. But you can actually use mantling for insane plays like here i'm, I'm going to show you you can mantle up jump up shoot mantle again and then shoot and it's going to throw your enemy off and they're not really going to know what's going on and the reason that is is because most people don't think that you're going to shoot and immediately mantle back up you know if you if you are right here is a ledge and you jump up and shoot someone right over here they're going to think you're going to go back down and then they're going to think you're going to jump back up and try to shoot them again so instead, you boom, shoot, mantle, and then you can shoot again, and it's going to throw them way off, and it's not really that difficult to do. I mean, it might take some practice, but honestly, that is a super powerful move that is sure to win you multiple fights in zero builds. All right, guys, now I want you to go out there and win some games and report back to me how much this helped you, if it was helpful at all. I really appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you all have a good day. Peace out.